Wow, great pose, Dan. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna be talking all about the girls. I posted on my Instagram what kind of topics you wanted to see, and a lot of you have questions about them, about twins in general, about their age, so they're three and a half. And I just figured I would have today's vlog kind of dedicated to them and just a little bit of everything. So throughout the day, I'm gonna go through all of your questions and topics and, and try to address all of them. And today's video is also sponsored by Maxi Cozy, which I'm so excited about because we've been using their car seat since the girls were born. So three and a half years ago, we had their infant car seat and then Owen had their infant car seat and now they're all in the three-in-one convertible car seat. So I'll show you what they look like in our car. I have them all in the second row together. And especially now, I appreciate them a lot because we have swim four days a week. We've been doing it for the past, gosh, like six weeks or so. So we're in the car a lot and it's been very convenient having them. So I'll share those a little bit later on. And if you guys are new here, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have kids, if you have twins, and I'd love to chat with you down below in the comment section. All right, so let's talk about when they wake up and sleep. Oh, uh-oh, Owen doesn't want you on his fire ship. We're also gonna talk about third baby in the mix and how they have been with Owen because a lot of you guys have been asking about that. Let's open these blinds up. So, they have been sleeping in separate rooms now for probably, I'm trying to think how long. It all started because they weren't napping together and I was getting so frustrated and I wasn't ready to let go of their nap because I knew they needed it. I knew they weren't ready to drop their nap because they would get super cranky midday, like late afternoon, and they would just be so tired. And I, I know they need rest, and especially them, they're literally together, like they're inseparable all day long. So I think it's so important for them to have just a little bit of downtime solo. I was laying in between their beds before Owen came around. They weren't napping together. It was pretty much when I put them in their new twin beds, and they just would run around the house like crazies. So, or run around the room. So I would lay in between them and then they would fall asleep. When Owen was born, I couldn't sustain that. So I was like, okay, I have to think of another way to do this. So I ended up switching them, or not switching them, putting Violet over here. We have a spare bedroom right there, which will be her room. I just didn't think they'd be in separate rooms this soon. And we started doing that for naps originally. And then she started wanting to go in there at bedtime and it was, so bittersweet, it was just like crazy that she wanted to be alone. But now it's just kind of cute to watch because Violet, she's definitely introverted and she likes her quiet alone time. June, not so much, but she's fine. She never really complains. Um, she knows Violet goes in there to nap. And we're gonna decorate this room eventually for Violet. For now, it's totally fine. But I thought it'd be fun to just, you know, let her kind of decorate this. But yeah, this is where she sleeps. She has her little sound machine. She loves her bed. She has it always like arranged perfectly and they just sleep so much better this way. We put them down for bed around 7.30. The earlier we start bedtime, the better. I try to start like their routine around seven. So putting our pajamas on, uh, brushing our teeth, reading some books because by the time they're actually in bed, like after we've said prayers and everything, it takes a long time with the two of them going potty and all of that. So the earlier we start, the better. And then they typically wake up around six, but they're, they've always been early birds like from, from the beginning. So um, pretty much all three of them are awake around six o'clock. And then they don't usually wake up in the middle of the night. They did go through a phase where they would get nightmares. Like it was, it wasn't a ton, but every now and then they'd wake up. I think it was June only. And every now and then June will come into our bed and sometimes she'll lay in our bed for a little bit and sometimes she'll just go back into her room. I find that like, I don't get any sleep when they come into our room. So usually I'll just bring them back into their bed and just say, you gotta go to bed, like stay in your room and they'll listen and they'll go back to sleep. One thing that we've had to deal with as they've gotten a little bit older is the coming out of their beds, like right when we put them to sleep. So the second we put them down for bedtime, we'll leave and they come out of their room a lot to like 
want another kiss or want to go potty or want water. So usually we just have to say like, you need to stay in your bed. This is our last kiss and hug. It's time to go to sleep. So we have to kind of say that. And that tends to help, but some nights they go right to bed. Some nights it's a process. What are you girls doing? Are you hiding? Who are you hiding from? I'm looking for two babies. Are they in here? Uh oh. For a nap, we're gonna go downstairs. We try to go downstairs when he's asleep so we can stay semi quiet. Andrew's going to work right now. Okay, so I'm in the garage. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about the car seats and I'll share some. Oh my god, what is that running by? Is that like a road runner? I want to share some tips on installing them properly and some misconceptions about when you are putting your little ones in your car seats just to help you out and make it a little bit more simplified. But keep in mind, you can always look at the manual if you need more guidance or you can schedule a call with a technician and they can walk you through the whole process to make sure it's all installed properly. Okay, so here we have all the car seats. So I have the two for the girls here. And then there is Owens right there. So he is still rear facing and then the girls are forward facing. And I love the color of theirs. It's the Nomad Sand. It's just so pretty. And we used to have um, an Explorer with tan interior so it matched. But now that we have black, I still think it looks really good. It just kind of pops. A lot of you guys ask since these are lighter if it shows stains. And I just watched these the other day and they came out looking so good. We've been in the car a lot for swimming lessons, and so they're eating a lot of snacks, using these cup holders a lot, which also they turn right out. You can wash them. These have held up so nicely. They are so durable, and they're also just so comfortable for them all to sit in. Another feature I love is that they just grow with your kids. So they work from birth up until about 10 years, so it's four to 100 pounds. So it's technically the only car seat that you'll need. So it's just very, very convenient. So let me put the girls in here and I'll show you a few tips on making sure your car seats are installed correctly. A couple of things to check is you want to do the pinch test so to make sure this is tight enough if you can pinch this and there's extra slack then tighten this up a bit so right here you push this little lever and you pull that strap to make this whole thing tighten up and then this shoulder strap this is too low down here so you want to have it at their armpit level so make sure that's right up there and then to check that your seat is tight enough to your car you don't want it to move an inch either way. So you can tighten this up right here and I just pull it as tight as it can go and you put it through this slot right here and this shouldn't wiggle an inch either way here. So if you guys are on the hunt for a new car seat, I highly recommend the Maxi Cozy 3-in-1 convertible car seats. I love that they're comfortable for all of our kids, but most of all, they keep them safe and that is number one in my book. If you guys wanna shop these yourself, I will have a link in the info section and it'll take you to the car seats. For who? For me and Flower. Oh, you and Flower going to bed? Flower, let's go to bed. But she, she, she's gonna still wake up and play with Mama. But I, but I'm the Sleeping Beauty, so I keep sleeping. Oh, you sleep a lot. And then, and then I go and talk to to, to, to my neighbor and Mama. Hmm. Night. Night, night. Night, night. Night, night. I'm going to bed. Night? No, you're not going to bed. Oh. You're staying away. Let me see. Ooh. That's a good bee. Let me see Violet. She's doing eyes. What's my bee? Wow. Oh, we have to draw this. Mm hmm Okay, so usually when Owen goes down for his nap, that is when I hang out with the girls and we'll do school, we'll play outside. We'll do something together. Okay, so while the girls are doing their tracing, let's talk about 
bringing another baby into the mix and how it was with with all of that it was very hard i'll just say that uh, they were craving my attention and it was also hard because since i had a c-section i couldn't hold them and they just wanted me to hold them and give them love and play with them and that was definitely a hard time uh, i kept telling myself this is a phase and it'll it'll get better. They definitely still get annoyed of Owen because he's just all up in their business. He wants to take all of their toys and they just don't get that. I get a lot of you guys asking if they ever fight and yes, they fight. And the three of them and just the girls fight. So as far as Owen goes, you know, I just have to say like, he doesn't understand. He doesn't know. We can't push, push him because do you know push him down a lot or like just to get him out of the way and as far as the two of them goes i always say it's hard because with twins you know they have to share everything all the time everything is each other's so i noticed around two and a half i started to get them separate things that's just for them i used to never buy doubles of anything because i had too many things everywhere but when they reached i want to say two I had to start getting two of things because they knew one was theirs and they didn't want to share it. Back to fighting. They definitely fight over things and I have found the best thing to do is redirect their attention. So if they're fighting over a toy, if I see who had it first and I'll just say, you know, did June have it or did Violet have it and then make them give it back. If I didn't see who had it, I'll, I usually just remove the toy and it's just gone if they're fighting over it. I do timeouts if it's something really bad. So say I saw one of them push the other or one time June bit Violet, something like that. That's when I give them a timeout because I need them to know that that is definitely not okay. That's not how we act. So I will bring them up. They're listening to me right now for sure. I will bring them up into their room and they'll stay in their room for a few minutes. And then I'll go up and I'll sit down with them and I'll just say, do you know why why did I give you a timeout? And they'll go, I don't know. And I go, no, yeah, you do. Like, tell me why you got a timeout. And they'll tell me, and I'll just say, we don't do that. We cannot hit. Um, we need to be nice to our sister. We need to be nice. We don't, you know, kind of explain it to them. Now they're at the age where they do understand that. A year ago, they wouldn't understand that. So um, just putting them in their room for a timeout would be, you know, punishment enough, and they'd understand that that's bad. Now I can actually talk with them and explain to them like why they don't do that. No, I know. I'm just talking. She said that won't be nice if you punish us. No, remember, I'm, I'm just talking about when you do something that's that's bad. Not right now. You're being really good right now. Another thing I have noticed with um, bad behavior with them usually is because they want to want attention. If one is acting out, if one is just being just not good usually they're craving attention and it's hard because you the first thing you want to do is you know get mad and you're frustrated but I have to take a step back and be like okay why are you acting this way and a lot of the time they just want me to play with them or because it's hard because I'm at home busy you know there's stuff I have to do at home I'm trying to work I'm trying to clean there's a lot going on and sometimes I have to like just tell myself to stop and just be more present, be more in the moment with them because truly that's all they want. So what we have started to do now a lot more is take them one-on-one -on -one somewhere. So I will take Violet with me to the store. I'm gonna post some photos of the girls when I take them individually because they are the happiest when I'm with them solo. It's like they're a different child. They are so sweet. The volume that they speak is much lower when they are just with me one-on-one. -on -one. The two of them together kind of compete all day long for attention for whoever I'm listening to. So in the car, it's like, or yelling when they're talking because they're just trying to get my attention. They'll be like, my turn to talk, my turn to talk. Um, in the beginning, I remember thinking it was so weird to separate them and I would think, okay, they don't want to be separated. We started doing it just in the grocery store. So Andrew and I would each have them in a cart and we would go separate ways and halfway through one, bless you, would want the other. You know, they'd call for each other. But now uh, Andrew will stay home with one and I will take one with me wherever it is just to run errands or something. In the beginning, they tend to ask where the other one is or they'll mention, they'll acknowledge that they're alone. So last time I was in the car with June, she was like, it's just me and you? 
And I said, yeah, it's just me and you. And she goes, that's why I love you, mom. And I just wanted to cry. I'm like, oh my gosh, they just, they understand that they're by themselves and they always see like, oh, there's nobody else with us. And then they kind of just enjoy from that moment on. So if you guys have twins, I would definitely try to separate them at like once a month. It doesn't have to be Disneyland with them, just to the post office, to the grocery store, just so they feel that, um, that undivided attention that they are craving all day long. So that is something that we are trying to do more of uh, more often, and especially with Owen in the mix, because they definitely know that he gets a lot of attention because he's a baby, I have to hold him all the time, and you know, he gets fussy. So with him especially, I noticed a change in their behavior. Okay, let's take it off. When he came around, there was a lot more tantrums. So they were two and a half when he was born. There was a lot more tantrums, a lot more just, it was crazy. And I just remember thinking like, why are they acting like this? And looking back, obviously it's an attention thing. Another thing that I have to do sometimes is just take things away and that is super effective. So if they're doing something, I'll say, hey, if you do that again, I'm gonna have to take your princess dress away or something like that. And they'll go, no, no, no. I have to, again, remind myself that they are two people and not compare them so much. You know, it's impossible not to do that, but I try when I'm doing schoolwork with them or something like that to work with them, you know, solo. So I'm not doing everything with them together instead of being like, okay, who can tell me this first? I try to avoid doing stuff like that because then it's again a competition all the time. And then one will, like June will usually answer things first. So then Violet never gets a chance. So I try to just do something with Violet and then have June doing something extra on her own. So I'll have June coloring and then I'll be working on letters with Violet just so Violet knows that she doesn't have to worry about June doing anything. It's just like her and only her. And we are gonna separate them for school. So. We're gonna put him in preschool, I believe, next year. We're still unsure if we're gonna do preschool or not. If we do, it'd be next fall, so they'd be four turning five, mid-year, and then they'll do kindergarten the following year. So we're gonna put him in the same class for preschool and kindergarten, I think, and then once first grade rolls around, we're gonna separate them. And again, just because they're different as far as how they learn, and I don't want them to always feel like they're competing for attention competing at who's better also they look so much alike so i think it'd be annoying if it was that if i were them to always be I mean, like everybody's confused by you everybody would be calling the other name in swim everybody's confused they always say june and it's violet and vice versa i want them to be their own person and to just thrive alone not have to feel like they are a unit like one person and that they are just lumped together as they're the twins I also never call them twins because I don't want them to feel like they're just a thing. You know, they're June and Violet, they're their own person. Okay, girls are outside playing in the water. I'm gonna make myself another cup of coffee. Mom, I brought some fresh juice. Good. I brought some fresh juice here, Mom. Fresh juice, thanks. Why is it hot? It's hot? Uh huh, and this bottle. That's weird. Was it in the sun? I think the donkey turned out hot. Bonky did. Uh -huh, it's oh, there's a crown stuff. You ready how to play? Uh -huh. So, we, everybody gets their paper and we're going to take the hourglass. Let's get it to the bottom first. And I want to read a book. Yeah, look, I'm going to pick one of these. Look, look. Uh -huh. And when I read the word, you have to draw it on the page. And I'm going to see if you can guess it, okay? Uh -huh. Are you ready, June? Uh -huh. Okay, you and Violet are going to go first. You're going to whisper in your ear, Violet. So we're going to draw Okay. Uh -huh. you ready? Get yeah. your paper. I'm going to turn this over on your marks. Get set. Go. Draw it. Okay. Oh, we'll see if Judy can guess it. Sun. Yeah. Sun. Look at Violet's. Look how good. Sun. Honey, that's great. Sun. Did she get it? Did she guess it? Yep. Owen is up from his nap. Mm. He's been drinking mm. out of the girls' bottles now. Mm. You're just a big boy. Mm. You're a big boy now, huh? Mm. Whoa. Mm. Now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I can't do those. Why not? 
because it's too tricky. I can help you. No, I don't want to do it. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow. But I can I can do this one. I can. Good. I, 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 Show me. Yeah. That's perfect. See, so you can do it. I also can do this one. That's six. Good. Can um, you find number one? This I can do this one. Yeah. See. Mama, I did six too. Good. And this one even. Wow. That's number seven. See, it's not so tricky. And then even this one. Honey, good job. Doctor Nickelback. Honey, you Doctor. did it. Mama, I don't think that. Yeah, we're done now. That was great. Okay, it's 11 o'clock. I'm making the girls some um, lunch, some leftover pasta. We were just outside on the trampoline and they were swimming in our little pool and running around like crazy, trying to get them tired for their nap. I saw on my Instagram a lot of you guys were asking about potty training. So the girls actually, I'm trying to think, do they ever wear, no, they wear pull-ups. They don't wear pull-ups anymore at night. They wear undies. They, knock on wood, have legit never peed the bed. So it's kind of crazy how that ended up happening. But they, we potty trained them. We started a little after they turned two. Girls, leave them alone. Sit down, finish your lunch. And it was really not going well. I had them fully naked and we'd be outside a lot. We had two potties for them and I had one in the bathroom. I ate all my strawberries. Okay, good job. You can go play a little bit for your nap, okay? Actually, let's put on a show right now. They were just afraid of the potty. Every time I would be like, let's go to the potty, let's sit down, they would scream. And I didn't want them to be afraid of it. I didn't want it to be a bad thing. So I remember mentioning it, a lot of you guys were like, just wait, they're definitely not ready. They would hide when they were going to the bathroom, so I just thought they were showing all the signs that they were ready to be potty trained, but I decided it'd just be best to wait. So when they were about two and a half, that's when we, I <laughs> decided that we were gonna full on potty train. I kept them at home. We didn't go anywhere for like a week. We, <laughs> I took their clothes off so it was just easy for them. And I had one potty outside and one in the bathroom. Hold on. And I would try to have them go to the bathroom every so often. So once I thought it had been a while, I'd, I would say to them, okay, let's go sit on the bath on the potty. And then when I would go to the bathroom, I'd have them come in with me so they could watch me and like see how it goes. And then I would just watch them for any signs they had to go to the bathroom. So if they were crossing their legs, if they just looked, if they kind of tucked away for a little bit, if they were, hiding i knew they had to go and i would just say let's go to the bathroom let's sit down and then when they would go i'd give them a little piece of candy like an m m or a chocolate chip and eventually i just stopped giving them one so we did have definitely a lot of accidents we had pee everywhere all the time but eventually it just clicked for them and it was fine i would do pull-ups for them when we would go anywhere and also when they would go to sleep at night and also for naps and then eventually we just took the pull-ups pull off and they were fine. I also would lay if we didn't have pull-ups in the car, or I think maybe I stopped doing pull-ups in the car, and I would put like a legit doggy pee pad on their car seat just in case. But I think they were always fine. Every now and then they'd pee like a little bit. I think the most important thing was making sure they weren't afraid of it, making it be like a positive thing. I brought some books in the bathroom so they could just sit and read and just really being super excited when they would go and making a huge deal out of it. So if one of them would go, I'd be like, June, let's go, Violet went to the bathroom, yay! And we'd like dance. And now they're great. Um, they never have any accidents. Every now and then they hold it so long to the point of like 
peeing their pants a little bit as they're running to the bathroom. So that's what we're trying to work on now is they just wait to the very last minute to go. So I'm trying to tell them, okay, the second you have to feel like you have to go, go to the bathroom because they just hold it so, so long. And then it took a while for them to figure out how to wipe themselves. And now they're pretty good about it. It also took a long time for them to figure out how to pull their pants back up. So every single time they go to the bathroom, I'd have to go with them or Andrew have to go with them and we'd have to, you know, wipe and pull up their pants and all that. So it literally just started happening for them to do that themselves, which is life changing because I felt like we were just constantly helping them, one of them in the bathroom all the time. So I hope that helps you guys out a little bit as far as potty training goes. And then as far as potty training twins, I would say do it together. Even if one's more ready than the other, I would just try to knock it out all at once because Gosh, the amount of pee you're cleaning up is just not fun. So I'd rather just kind of do it all in one sweep. Same thing like when they get sick, if your twins ever get sick, I would never try to keep them apart from each other because they're bound to both get it. <laughs> so usually when one gets sick, I don't have them, <laughs> like I legit have them share cups and everything when they're sick because I'd rather them just both get sick within a few days rather than having to like wash everything all over again. And usually when they do get sick, one gets it, a day goes by and then the other one gets it, like clockwork every single time. And then also, if your twins are identical, I mean, maybe if they're fraternal too because they are technically eating kind of the same things, but at least for our girls, they go to the bathroom the exact same time every day. It's the weirdest thing. They poop, they pee within 20 minutes of each other all day long. So if one goes to the bathroom, I'm on the other one like, let's go to the bathroom because I know they usually have to go. So I should be cleaning the house, but instead I'm making myself ice cream. I'm gonna douse it in this caramel sauce because you only live once. Junie is up and how can we put all the dishes away? You're doing such a good job. I get the other baby one for me. Okay, I'll get it for you. The baby one in here. Good job. So I can put more. Talk to it now, Mama. Talk to it. No, you talk to it. Monkey. Hi, monkey. Hey, monkey. Don't you fight. Do you fight? Then you're a monkey. My turn. Monkey. My turn. I did a monkey. I'll take a picture of you, Mom. That's the blue one. That's so we go around and a wiggle. Okay. And a wiggle up. Nice. Okay, I will. On, on the white board. Okay, tell me who this is. A yellow girl. A yellow girl, yep. So, so we go to two. To, to. Okay. Around to, to a yellow spot to here. Oh. Well, wonderful. All right, guys, I'm gonna end the video here so we can just relax with the girls and then we're gonna put them down. It's almost 7.30, so I hope you all enjoyed today's vlog. If you are new, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.